So a plan was formulated, a date was agreed upon, and things were put into motion. The day of moving from my mum's was a really exciting day, but at the same time sort of quite a sort of nervous day as well because I'd been 10 weeks, 12 weeks, no 10 weeks on my mother's driveway and really not seeing much of anybody else and being in this routine and being fairly comfortable even though going slowly around the twist and there was this sort of excitement of being able to get out but then there was this sort of anxiety with regards to going to a place that I didn't know, meeting people that I didn't know, the only contact being Jordan and it had been some time since we'd properly seen each other and spoke. So there was um, a degree of yeah, anxiety and sort of trepidation to some extent. But the day came and I got on the road and the drive down, or across rather, was was brilliant. It was just really nice to finally be on the road. I'd been itching to just get on the road. Yeah, van life, I suppose, is is all about travel. It's all about freedom, and when you're stuck in one place for a long time, yeah, there is the convenience of all of the traps and trimmings that are with you when you're in um, a permanent location. But then there is also the the side where you know you're sort of you get itchy feet, you need to be on the move, you need to be seeing different scenery. And so the move down the drive down was was just incredible that feeling of just being on the road again to be driving I, I mean I hadn't driven for over 10 weeks and um, yeah it was just nice to experience that it was you know, driving around the M25 and it not being a car park was quite a novelty driving up the M40 and then eventually down the M5 into a county that I'd never seen before, never visited, was really, really nice. And eventually I made made it to my location and was just immediately hit with the beauty of the spot and the peacefulness of the place. Um, yeah, I really, I really locked out with this place, that's for sure. I spent the first evening meeting my hosts and that was quite interesting. Um, I guess now when we talk about it retrospectively, it's quite funny because, you know, I'm thrust into this situation where you arrive at a place where they've been under their own lockdown sort of quarantine and suddenly this complete stranger rocks up on their doorstep and so there was a a degree of suspicion I suppose and um, yeah talking about it now it's actually quite funny to hear the the view from my hosts and what their concerns were and who the hell is this guy etc and um, I guess I turned out not to be that guy for them fortunately and um, but yeah it was really nice to sort of be in a position where you could actually meet people and talk to people 
because in the 10 weeks on my mum's driveway I really didn't speak to anyone at all apart from my mum and her husband that was it uh, I had no contact with anyone apart from you know a hello or something on one of my running routes or when I went to buy a bottle of wine from a local vineyard or something like that uh, but it was now nice to be in a situation where I could meet people and talk to people and finally kind of have some sort of purpose yeah I'd wake up in the mornings outside Jordan's house I was parked up on his front garden and I sort of moved my van around camped in properly built a sort of decking area so that I could sort of step out of the van onto a nice deck I'd put my log burner out there barbecue table chairs etc just made it really comfortable and to have that door open and being able to see that view which was that hill known as the ridge and the three or four oak trees across the top of it was just such an incredible view to wake up to every morning and just having that opportunity to just sort of walk about the farm and explore and have places to just walk and be quiet and have time to think and places where I could go and run um, yeah it was it was a really really nice peaceful beautiful location I would spend days just walking around contemplating things and it got me into thinking a lot about my mum and what I'd left behind and I realised that there was a side where maybe maybe I'd been unfair to her to some extent in that as frustrating as it was for me to be on her driveway and seeing her life up close and being frustrated by it I guess I kind of turned around and thought to myself but this is her life this is nothing to do with you I can take a step back from this and get out of this I began to realize that how sad the situation was with my mum that she had to sort of go through that all the time and It sort of brought home that she was living this existence that I had no control over and I think there comes a point when you just have to sort of realize that there is nothing you can do you just have to kind of let go and kind of I guess fingers crossed hope that she'll just muddle through and just carry on doing what she needs to do and I guess so long as you can be there for her and you know be in the background and pick up the phone and talk to her and etc that's I guess is about the only thing that you can do because the hold of what's wrong with her has such a grip that unfortunately there really isn't a lot that I or anyone else could really do because most of it is down to my mum and so thinking about this I kind of then started to sort of turn the attention off myself in terms of what a hassle it was for me and then realise that actually <laughs> how shit is it for my mum and that she battles through this day by day and kind of having this new sort of I don't know respect for the difficulty that she goes through day by day so it kind of got me 
thinking a lot about the relationship that I have with her and yeah maybe I shouldn't be so harsh and um, and accept the fact that there really isn't a lot that I can do. So farm life, man did I luck out with this location, I mean I'm parked up with this stunning view of the bridge, a fishing lake just over the hedge in front of me, I had electric so I could have my laptop on all the time and watch films and Netflix etc. Um, yeah, surrounded by incredible countryside, the most amazing group of people to hang out with and to boot having a brewery on site. Oh my goodness me, talk about tick all the boxes. <laughs> Bloody hell. Um, yeah, day to day living on the farm was just brilliant. For the most part, I was just able to just enjoy my own company and do pretty much what I wanted to do and just go about and wander and take footage. Um, stroll through the hop yards. I used to spend a lot of time just walking around the hop yards and just taking photos and film. Uh, they were really amazing places. Um, walking up onto the ridge and looking across the team valley was incredible. Uh, the occasional low flying aircraft would sort of whet my appetite. Um, and then every now and then just sort of working on little projects, just helping out here and there, clearing out barns, knocking holes through walls, helping on a wedding venue, um, just, you know, just chipping in here and there and just doing bits and bobs, <laughs> cleaning a marquee. Um, bottling bottles at the brewery, making boxes for the brewery, uh, putting labels on bottles, uh, all kinds of little things. It was just a lot of fun. And just doing these little odd jobs here and there just kind of made, for the first time in, in a while, just day-to-day -day living just that bit easier because I was now in a situation where I could um, basically uh, do a day's work and then sort of come back to the van and cook some tea and feel like you'd kind of had some purpose for for once and it was yeah it was just nice to do that and then certain evenings or weekends would come along and there would be some kind of celebration or get together um, which would then involve vast quantities of alcohol um, and 
yeah, they got to a point where I was only really able to do these things at the weekends. I think all of us needed to sort of like, <clears throat> you know, have a breather a bit for the week. But that heat was hot over that summer and the call for beer o'clock seemed to just come earlier and earlier in the day and then became earlier and earlier in the week so where you just wanted a week off it didn't really work out that way <laughs> um, I guess after my summer on the farm I think my um, my liver and my brain cells um, needed a rest Let's put it that way <laughs> um, and then farm life got really, really exciting during the July month because there was the relaxation of lockdown rules and um, there was the opportunity to sort of do things over the weekends which enabled the farm to sort of um, kind of come back to some sort of sense of normality so we had these um, beer and pizza days on the Saturdays and they were just so much fun to look forward to it kind of um, gave us a reason to sort of um, set up a venue and we set up all over the place we set up in the orchard in the hop yard, in the field next to the river, and each time there was this process of moving all of the vehicles and all of the trimmings to make the Saturday a really, really good day for those that came to uh, participate. And um, yeah, I kind of really relished the. Saturday beer and pizza events they were just amazing it was so much fun to sort of set up and then ultimately then work on those days and yeah I had a absolute blast meeting people and getting to chat with new people and everything it was just such a such a good time so that kind of thing kind of gave me a, another sort of motivation And then after those, there became another weekend to eventually start planning and looking forward to. So the end of July was approaching quite fast and I'd finally been given the nod that work was going to be going back and um, the slow steady um, implementation of things that needed to kind of get us into a place where work and the department could start functioning again plans were a foot. So this became an, uh, a time when, yeah, I was becoming quite sad because everything now was coming to an end. This summer of mine was coming to an end, and I sort of um, had put plans in place for a kind of last hurrah to some extent a, a weekend celebration and so discussions with Tom I um, came up with a weekend where I could invite some friends over for a weekend and um, this weekend kind of really I suppose was was the highlight of my whole summer 
Um, and the things that happened over that weekend are uh, memories which I will just cherish forever. They were just incredible moments that we had. And um, I can't not look back at that period of time without smiling because I don't think I've ever laughed so much in my life. It was insane how funny some of the situations were. So we'd agreed on this weekend. I'd agreed a date with work when I was going to be going back. And so I invited a select few. I kind of, I suppose, I felt a bit like uh, Willy Wonka here. Um, there were a select few that had a golden ticket. And um, yeah, I had to be careful because I couldn't open it up to too many people. Uh, we were still under, at that time, some kind of lockdown restrictions in terms of numbers of people, etc. So um, I had to sort of keep it fairly small. But the anticipation and the build up for this weekend was brilliant. Um, it kind of gave me another sort of purpose and another sort of exciting thing to look forward to. And so I relocated for the first time, I relocated my van down to the, what we kind of nicknamed as lockdown field um, and uh, had uh, erected the TP down there with Greg. Uh, that was an absolute hoot trying to put that thing up. <laughs> um, and yeah, made a sort of kind of small camp with this sort of like little festival vibe to it. And it was just really nice to have this opportunity to be able to do something like that. Um, the guys were invited, WhatsApp messages were sent left, right and centre and then it was just all a matter of waiting. I had no idea who and if all the people were going to turn up or not. So there's always that sense of nervousness and anxiety and whether everyone's going to like it or, or it. You know, I don't know, there's a, there's a whole myriad of, of, of things that go through, well, my head anyway. I'm, I'm an overthinker, that's my problem. Um, and anyway, uh, the process of just um, thinking about how this weekend was going to go and everything kind of was keeping me um, on edge to some extent. But the weekend files came round and oh my god, what an experience, what an amazing time I had.